All right, welcome to today's foundational knowledge video. We're talking about the 21 things you may not know about the Indian Act. It's a, an awesome, awesome book, an awesome resource uh, for you to truly understand um, the landscape that we're, uh, we are all in today and how it came to be. And, you know, when you think about the Indian Act, if you, if you don't know about it, it's a system that was designed to to control, assimilate, and franchise the indigenous people because when we signed treaties back in the day in 1800s, uh, in the Canada itself didn't didn't expect indigenous people to to be considered indigenous people this long. You know, it was made to, for for to make a indigenous Indian, Indian person a Canadian citizen and dissolve, you know, dissolve treaties, dissolve um, all this, all the rights that we have and just make Canada basically Canada, right? So I'm going to shut this off. And so we're going to go over the next few days. There's 21 things. I want to just break them down for you in uh, bite-sized pieces. But it's a book by Bob Joseph. Uh, you could pick it up. I highly recommend it for you if uh, you're going through this journey of foundational knowledge to get this book. It's one of those books that um, you should have in your library. You should have uh, for your personal um, journey to learn. And you're going to learn a lot of, uh, of why uh, things are the way they are. So, you know, the very first thing about it was this was not our governance system. What you see today and how you come to know and understand uh, reservations, chief and council, that was not our, our way of doing things. Uh, yes, we had chiefs and yes, we had leaders within our tribes, but our whole way of governing ourselves was, um, we had a whole complex system, our, our own way and worldview of doing things. If you even look back in history, we had tribes up to 40,000 members within a tribe at the same time that London had about 15,000 people. So in order for, to have a, a 40,000 population in any area, you need a very complex system to do that. You need your own worldview, your own religion, your own trade system, your own treaties with different tribes, all that. And we always had that in place. So the when the Indian Act came to be, they imposed this elected chief and band council system. And the, the reason why they did that is they wanted to have full control over the way we governed ourselves. And they just thought our way of governing ourselves was, was not a, a good system. It wasn't, um, they ba basically undermined our way of doing things, our way of life, that all our tribes had its own, you know, uh, skills, talents, abilities, our own institutions, economy, our own control of territory and resources within. We had a whole complex system, and yet the Indian Act, when it came to be, was more of saying, okay, you guys don't use this system, let's use our system. And they did the elected chief and, and band council the way a municipality would run their system. So in a municipality, you know, you get elected and they, they vote for for who's going to be in a leadership within a town or a city or a ward. And then so they impose that system to us, right? And basically the whole role of a chief nowadays was to administer the Indian Act and make sure that their the reserve is following the rules of the Indian Act. And the Indian Act was basically to uh, assimilate us and to to make us Canadian so we could dissolve, you know, like uh, um, the treaties, we could dissolve reservations and just be fully Canadians and totally abandon our way of thought and our identity, basically. <laughs> and so the system is is designed to go against us, to... So now we have people who are struggling with their identities, they're struggling with who they are because we, we live in a system that is not ours. And the federal government put indigenous people in a box and it didn't realize each nation had its own specialized skills, tools, authority, governance systems, and the capaci capacity that was developed over centuries. And so the whole system imposed through the Indian Act was, you know, a settler idea of how they thought an indigenous person should be and should should live their lives. So, you know, it's, it's pretty messed up of how, how that all is. And so here's why it's hard 
to grow within that system. So in, in, 1950, in 1951, originally when you became a chief in council through the Indian Act, you were only a leader for three years and then it got changed to two years. Now if you think about that, and I, here I am, I run a business and I, I run several businesses. If the leadership in within my business had to change every two years, it would be so hard for me to have long-term goals. It'd be so, so hard for me to have big projects. And so if you think about a reservation with a chief and council, it's the exact same thing. So when a chief comes in and has all these ideas of making the reservation better, we're going to build this big building and resources and we're going to have this youth center and things like that. If another chief gets elected the next term and doesn't have those same ideas, all of those proje projects, if they weren't completed, they get halted. And so they're in this rush of getting things done, uh, long-term projects and resources and partnerships with different uh, industries. All of those get tampered with when a new chief and council get, come in. So it's very hard to... Um, to have growth on a reservation when you have the Indian Act system in place like that because you don't have a collective mind. And when you're on reservation with the lack of jobs and the lack of, uh, you know, for people to, uh, to, to get, find work, those chief and council positions become uh, a way of fighting for, you know, uh, so different families get pitted against each other and you have these rivalry, I can't even say it, you know, these, these families who are fighting against each other and all because of this Indian Act system of who can get power within a, a reservation. And originally, only males over the age of 23 were allowed to vote, while Indian women were not given the right to vote until the 1951 Indian Act, uh, you know, that's Bill C-31 and all that kind of stuff. So what did uh, the Indian Affairs, basically, they controlled the finance, the land, the affairs, the bylaws, and the resources of a reservation. And so we're basically like puppets, puppets on our, on our own land because of the Indian Act that was imposed. And so the chiefs, they didn't have too much control. This, this is what the chiefs had control of. They had control of public health, uh, the observance and uh, order of decorum at assemblies in general Indians and in general council or occasions. So basically when they gathered, they were able to, to um, control all that. The repression and inter intemperance and profligacy. So basically, you know, um, being the savage, basically, they, they had to repress that. And that's kind of what they thought of us. And so chiefs were supposed to repress that. The prevention of trespass by cattle, the maintenance of roads, bridges, and ditches, and fences, which is totally horrible. If you're going to reservations, right, there's, the roads are horrible, the bridges, the ditches, the fences are, are not, but don't get too much resources for that at all. The construction and repair of house, school houses, council houses, and Indian public buildings, the establishment of pounds, and the appointment of pound keepers, the locating of land in their reserves and establishment of a register of such location. So those are the, the things that the chief had um, control over. And so, you know, like I said, you know, when different chiefs and councils come in, the plans, the ideas, all this becomes backlogged because not a lot of chiefs have the same idea as the, as the next chief come in or the next council members that come in. And so because of this short leadership time within a community, it creates conflict with community members of a tribe and end up fighting amongst each other for these power positions. So um, that's the part one of uh, 21 things you didn't know about the Indian Act was this was not our way of governing ourselves. This was imposed on us, and it's not a system that works for us. There are some, some things that you could find if you look you know, for positives. There would be some there, but this, in general, is not our system. It does not work for us, and I think like the government needs to realize, even though it's been this long, that we have our own way of think, doing things, our own ro worldviews, things like that. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to read the full blog post, I have the link in the description, and it'll, it'll take you to, to part one, and learning about part one. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go into part two, where it talks about the effects of the Indian Act when it comes to indigenous women. How did that affect the indigenous women? So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you got any value of this, like, share, comment, but, you know, smash that like button that com and uh, subscribe to Powell Times. And thank you so much for watching.